From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Good evening, folks. This is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel this evening. Today I want to talk about uh, hypertensive encephalopathy. So, let me give you a case. You got a 60-year-old female patient. She is complaining of a severe headache. She tells you that uh, she is confused and her ideas and thoughts are not appropriate. Her vision became blurry. She is nauseous, vomiting. You did a physical exam and uh, you found some focal neurological signs. And uh, Past medical history is significant for high blood pressure and you took her blood pressure it was like 250 by 150. So when you see this patient, what is your diagnosis? That's a classic case of hypertensive encephalopathy. So encephalopathy giving headache in a patient with a history of high blood pressure. And she has these classic symptoms like visual disturbances, neurologic deficits, vocal or generalized seizures, and uh, blood pressure when it goes like uh, in excess of 150, 250 by 150, and it needs urgent treatment. Otherwise, these people will go into seizures and coma and even die from intracerebral bleeding. And you evaluate them for any coexisting renal problems. And cerebrovascular spasm, impaired autoregulation of cerebral blood flow, all these things can happen. Many times they will have intravascular coagulation. So let us see the most important points in hypertensive encephalopathy. If you look at the pathophysiology, many theories have been put forward. There are people who say cerebrovascular spasm happens. There are people who say that there are uh, hemorrhages happen. But the main concern here is like clinical diagnosis and treatment. If you look at these patients and do a physical exam, and uh, if you observe them ophthalmoscopy, you will see exudates and papilledema. If you do a lumbar puncture, you may see an elevated or normal CF pressure. And if you do a CT scan, you can see edema in the posterior regions of uh, hemispheric white matter. So in the posterior hemispheric white matter edema on a CT scan, if you read those words, you need to think of hypertensive encephalopathy. Now differential diagnosis. Hypertensive encephalopathy is the diagnosis of exclusion. That means you need to think of most other most common causes like stroke, subarachnoid hemorrhage because they can also present with acutely elevated blood pressure with focal neurological abnormalities. Stroke is by far the most likely diagnosis with elevated blood pressure and papilledema and consciousness variation. So when you see these kind of symptoms you should always think of stroke and um, subarachnoid hemorrhage or intracranial hemorrhage and you need to immediately make it a medical emergency to treat these patients. Many times they might develop acute glomerular nephritis or eclampsia. If the patient is pregnant, she obviously went into eclampsia. I mean when she develops the seizures along with the abnormally elevated high blood pressure. So the context is very important when you see these patients. And how do you treat them? One important agent is nitroposide. Nitroposide. You give an IV infusion of sodium nitroposide. And sodium nitroposide lowers blood pressure by releasing the vasodilator nitric oxide. So you give sodium nitroposide, it releases nitric oxide, it dilates the vessels and 
brings down the blood pressure. We can also use diazoxide and levetalol to obtain the same therapeutic effect. And the other important thing is don't be too aggressive in reducing the blood pressure. In the first one hour, you need to reduce only 20 to 25 percent of the high value. And you should not decrease the diastolic blood pressure more than less than 100. So it's very important, folks. Do not treat it very, very aggressively that you bring the high value all the way to down value. You are actually making things worse. So see the case. A patient came to you with, uh, let us say, like as I said, 60-year-old female. She had a headache. She is confused. Her vision became blurry. She has nausea and vomiting. She has a history of uh, blood pressure, and you took her blood pressure. It's like 250 by 150. And uh, what are the things you need to think about? You need to think about stroke. You need to think about intracranial hemorrhage. You need to think about hypertensive encephalopathy. Very important. If the CT scan is normal, obviously you are looking at uh, hypertensive encephalopathy. And you treat it aggressively using sodium nitroprusside or diazoxide or levetalol. So those are the important points I wanted to share with you this evening about hypertensive encephalopathy. And please visit my website at www.paul.org for more videos on these subjects. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.